Audi TT Mark I, should I buy a Roadster, an owner's guide? Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel where today's video is going to be an honest review of a Audi TT Roadster 225 from an owner's perspective. Yep, yeah, that's right, I'm going to review the car and tell you all of my experiences over the last few years of driving this car and owning this car. The good thing is I am now the owner of a coupe as well, so I'm able to compare both cars and give you the insight into the pros and cons of the Roadster. It's October and the weather's starting to change, but it's a lovely sunny day, so I'm going to put the roof down take the car for a spin and we can have a chat. One of the first things to point out about the TT Roadster, if you're looking for a convertible, is it's got an electric roof. Yeah, so a press of this button, a flick of that handle, pull of this switch. And we're now in the open air. I don't think you can ask for more than that. Another great thing is right now we're getting towards winter, so the prices of these Roadsters are dropping. Roadsters are definitely a summer car, as you can imagine, and the prices are reflected in that. As you approach summer, prices go up, everyone wants one. As the weather changes, no one wants to drive it over the winter, although I think you should, the prices will come down, and that makes it an ideal opportunity right now to buy a Roadster. Even though the weather is changing, the good thing about this Roadster is it has heated seats, which are activated right here from the dash. They've got seven heat settings as well, although I don't think there's an awful lot of difference between it being in one and it just being on and right round seven burning your backside off. Hopefully you can hear me over the engine, the wind noise, because inside the cabin there's not an awful lot of road noise. In fact, with the windows up and the rear deflector in place, you feel like you're cocooned in a car. You don't feel cold at all. There's no wind whipping around your ear rolls. So worth pointing out that wind deflector, which you've probably seen come up behind me. There's a glass deflector that you can activate from a switch. Again, it's electric. And with that in position, you feel really cocooned. And the best bit is, it's October, weather's not too bad. I've got a hoodie on, obviously, to keep me warm. But you've got all of this, all of this going on. Fresh air around your ear holes. Fabulous. Performance wise, the Roadster comes in a 150 brake horsepower, a 180 brake horsepower, and a 225 brake horsepower on the 1.8 engine. There is also a 3.2 V6 version of the Roadster for those of you that don't want a turbo, and it comes in automatic or manual. Driving experience well, I can only comment from the 225 version of the Roadster but it's very responsive and you put your foot down and it will go. As I'm showing now, on these country, wow! Acceleration on these country roads, once that turbo kicks in, is immense. And that's what these cars are all about. They're so cheap at the moment that it's not the miles, it's the smiles, as they say. So you put your foot down and if it does that to your face that it does to mine, car's worth every single penny it's just a myth and the hold in the road you know it's got that quattro four-wheel drive amazing it's just great fun guys would i recommend you picking up an audi tt roadster would i they are just such great fun to drive and prices right now they are fairly low for the car you can probably pick up a roadster as cheap as about six or eight hundred pounds for one that's quite tired. For a decent mileage car right now, you're probably looking at around the 1800 to 2000 pound mark with a good service history. Again, the prices are fairly low at the moment because it's getting towards the winter time. Handling, well, I'm pretty sure I can comment on the handling as I own both the Cooper and the Roadster. And between the two, well, the Roadster does feel a little bit more wallowy than the coupe. 
it's got extra stiffening underneath from the subframe to replace some of the stiffening that you've lost by chopping the roof off. As an owner of a TT Roadster of four years, I feel I've gained enough experience to talk about some of the pitfalls that may become you if you purchase one. Some of the things are common across both the coupe and the Roadster, but extra things to point out for on the Roadster are blocked roof drains. There's a roof drain either side of the car, in the back, they tend to get blocked and if they do, they can cause a bit of flooding in the back. Now, there's a module in the back called your CCM and that's a control module that activates a lot of the electrics in the car. And if that gets wet and damaged from water, which can happen, you're looking at a big bill to get that fixed or track down a second hand one. While we're on the hood, the hood has a piece of glass in the back of it and if you smash that piece of glass or it tends to come unstuck in these roasters in the corners, that also is a bit of a pig of a job. Now I have covered that on the channel, but in the end I replaced the roof. I was lucky enough to get a second hand hood from a breaker for £300. That's not always the case, so if you need to replace the hood with a brand new one, you're looking at a £1,000. While we're on the hood, the hood is obviously an electric mechanism. Again, that can have problems. And there's two pistons either side of the hood. They have a habit of popping off. So if the hood's not working, don't go looking at all the electrics and see what's failed. If you can hear something trying to happen, it could be that. Also with the hood, the closing mechanism, you tend to get a light on the dash telling you the hood's not closed when the cars get a bit older and the mechanism gets worn. All you need to do is put a small piece of plastic credit card in the mechanism and that solves that problem. I cover that on the channel also. Apart from that, the cars are pretty robust. Interiors tend to wear quite well and there's always lots of interiors around. The good thing about the Roadster is there's only two front seats, there's no rear seat. So you can tend to pick up a pair of seats on eBay or equivalent for about £100 in good condition. Common things that could go wrong on the car include the LCD pixelated dash on the dashboard. That affects both the coupe and the Roadster. But again, you can get that replaced or you can get it repaired from a couple of guys online for about £100. Again, I've covered that on the channel also. So wait for that turbo to kick in and just put your foot down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Love that, love that, go on. Holds the road amazing. So things that get overlooked from the service department from people that have been looking after themselves. Well, the oil pickup pipe which sits in the sump is something that gets overlooked. That can get clogged up and if it's not changed and maintained, that can starve your engine of oil and cause a seizure. While we're talking of oil, there's a Haldex unit on the four wheel drive and that's the part that controls the four wheel drive at the back of the car. Again, that needs regular servicing or it can fail. I think personally my Roadster is suffering from a failed Haldex at the moment because I'm able to spin the wheels. If you're getting wheels spinning in your car, that's a good sign that the Haldex or part of the four-wheel drive system is probably not working. So would I buy an Audi TT Roadster again? You bet I would. Would I buy one right now coming into winter? If I've got somewhere to store it or garage it, then absolutely right I would because I think you can use this car year round. It is going to become an appreciating classic. Prices do tend to be all over the shop right now, so it's hard to say how much you should be paying for your car. So what have I needed to change in my four years of ownership? Well, it was maintained and had a full service history, but I have replaced one of the inner CV boots that had failed and split. Look at around 250 to 300 pounds for that job at a garage. Haldex oil is around 120 pounds at a garage. The cam belt should be changed every 75,000 miles or five years, whichever comes first as a recommendation. For genuine parts and fitting, I paid £435 for the job about 18 months ago. The usual oil and air filter change should also take place at the recommended intervals, so allow another £100 for that job. Brake discs and pads have also been done on the car, which I did myself, and they came in at £200 for the lot. I mentioned I had to replace the hood, which I bought second-hand from a breaker for £300. The pixelated dash I also had fixed for £100, including the 48-hour turnaround and return postage. Tyres can vary in price, but you can pick up a decent branded tyre for the car for around £80. Other maintenance jobs I have undertaken to keep the car on the road and can be found on my channel. You may be wondering about storage. Well, there is only two seats and the back seat area is taken up by the roof void. 
The boot space is also reduced compared to the coupe, but I am able to get my entire ice hockey kit in there, which is the equivalent to around six large shopping bags full of shopping. You'll also find the storage for the tonneau cover that you fit over the roof in the down position. It adds to the aesthetics and also aerodynamics. The Roadster maximizes space in the rear bodywork with great hidey holes and compartments for small storage too. These are behind each seat as well as a flap down area for your keys and wallet between the seats. The majority of parts are readily available for both the Roadster and Coupe due to an excellent supply of cars that are braking around the country, while most consumable parts such as brakes, nuts and bolts etc are also available new. Pretty good for a 20 year old car. And I would say everything under here is pretty accessible. This is the 1.8 turbo model and you can see this is the 225 from the charge pipe whereas the 180 would not have that. Things that can fail on these cars now they're getting 20 years old is lots of the pipes can go soft so you could suffer from boost problems. PCV system is also getting old and perished so you might need to replace that but the dipstick itself you have to be careful with that because that could break. It's a very delicate piece of plastic so please be careful. So that's my review of owning an Audi TT Mark 1 Roadster. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today and I hope it's helped you make up your mind whether to or when to not buy one yourself. I'd be interested to know your thoughts as an Audi TT Mark 1 Roadster owner if you agree with what I'm saying today. If you do or if you do not why don't you leave a message for me down in the comments. If you like what you've seen today then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark 1. As always thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.